Well, how is this for keeping it real, huh? Um, I should be in bed. I'm in my pajamas and I'm ready for bed, but I couldn't get it off my heart that I needed to do this tonight and not tomorrow when I was fresh and ready for the day. It's been a long day. Um, and I've been sick and I've been really, really tired. Um, and that made for a bad combination. I've been kind of in a funky place and I haven't quite known why. And I've been feeling like I've just been a little bit distracted from the things that I've been needing to do. And so on Sunday, I picked up my Bible and I was reading in Ezekiel chapter 33. And I'm reading out of the King James, but I'm going to try to translate into a simpler text as I go along to make it easier to understand. So, again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring a sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast, and set for him their watchmen, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet, and warn the people. So God's saying, Tell the people of Israel to appoint somebody as their watchman to go keep watch. And when he sees trouble coming, blow the trumpet and sound the warning. Right? Then, verse 4, Whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head, on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. So what's that saying is if the watchman does his job and he sees trouble coming and he sounds the trumpet and the people don't listen, it's not the watchman's fault. Their blood is going to be on their own head. But if the watchman does his job and he blows the trumpet and the people take that warning and they do what they're supposed to do, then they'll save themselves. Straightforward, right? Verse 6. But if the watchman see the sword, that would be the dishwasher, but if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So if the watchman is watching and he sees the sword or the danger coming and he doesn't warn the people, if they perish, it's the watchman's fault. And then this was the kicker that got me on Sunday. Verse 7. So thou, son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. My mom asked me tonight, what's, what's been the matter with you? You haven't quite seemed like yourself the last couple of days. And I just looked at her and I just said, you know what, mom? I think I just got weary with well-doing. Being a stay-at-home mom and a homeschooling stay-at-home mom, you do the same things day in and day out, and you say the same words, and you're trying to teach the same lessons to the same three people that you see all day long. And sometimes you just wonder, is it really doing any good? Are they really listening, and does it really matter? And I can sit here for an hour and knit, and at the end of that hour, I'll have a hat or a pretty good start on a scarf. And the amount of effort that I put into it has a tangible result. I can goof around on the computer and mess around with HTML code or goof around in Photoshop. And at the end of it, where there was only one sidebar, there's now two. And the background changes and whatever. And, and the amount of effort that I put into it has a tangible outcome and I can see it and I know that what I'm doing and the effort that I'm putting out has made a difference. Knitting and web pages aren't necessarily eternal but I can see something from my effort and I realize 
that I was putting my time and attention to things that were tangible because I had gotten weary with doing what the Lord's called me to do, which is to train up my children and disciple them and to teach them about who He is because I can't see any fruit from my effort that's tangible right now. I don't want to give anybody the wrong impression. Nobody in my house is, is outright rebelling. Everybody's doing the same things that they've always done. I was on the, my father's royal message board tonight and a very wise person, Crystal, um, reminded me of November. It's November. <laughs> I forgot that it was November. Whether you're a first-time homeschooler or a veteran homeschooler or a teacher in school, there's something about November that it comes and you're, you're not having the, the excitement and the adrenaline rush of the beginning of the school year. You haven't quite hit the holidays and, and that excitement and parties and all that stuff and, and that, that break that you get. And there's something about November where you stop and you just think, I can't do this. What am I doing? Should I really be doing this? I can't homeschool. I can't continue to teach these children. They're not listening to me. It's not making any difference. But I know that the one who has called me to homeschool is going to be faithful to me to give me the strength and the wisdom and the energy to finish out the task. And I forgot that when I feel like all of the responsibility for the outcome of what I do, when I think that it rests on my shoulders, it gets overwhelming. My shoulders can't bear it. And your shoulders can't bear it. Only the shoulders that were pinned to the cross can bear it. And I forgot that I'm not responsible for what my kids do with what I teach them. I wrote a whole big long post on miscellaneous about this called the big what if, but I forgot. And if I forget, I'm thinking maybe there's another mom out there that forgets too. So I'm reminding myself and I'm reminding you that we can't control the outcomes of what our kids do with the love and the attention and the care that we give them. But we will stand before the Lord not for the responsibility of what they did with it, but for what we did. And to not grow weary in well-doing. And to keep reminding them, keep teaching them, keep saying the same thing over and over again so that they're going, Yeah, Mom, I know. That's good if they say, Yeah, Mom, I know. That means you're doing your job and they hurt you. So that's really, really good. And I forget that because I think when they just, yeah, yeah, mom, I know, I know that they don't want to hear it and they're not listening to me. And so then I figure, what's the use? And so I'm tempted to just stop. But if they say, yeah, yeah, mom, I know, then that means I said it before. They remember that I said it before. As I read this passage, I'm reminded that the Lord has placed me and every mom and dad out there as watchmen because there's a lot of things that are examples of the sword dangers with you know with, with drugs or with I mean just peer pressure all of those things there's so much stuff that want to take your kids down want to take my kids down and we've been there because we grew up and we know and we've experienced those dangers and we can tell them, you know what, honey, don't do that. It's going to wipe you out. And whether or not they listen and whether or not they obey ultimately isn't my deal. My deal is the Lord has given me these children. He's totally given my husband and I peace that homeschooling is what we need to do. I just need to be faithful to what he's called me to do. 
knowing that I can trust him with the choices that my children make and that he's bigger than I am and that he can speak to their hearts and he can intervene and he can always, as the Bible promises, provide for them a way out, a way of escape so that they don't make choices that mess them up. So all this is to say, I'm sitting here in my pajamas without a stitch of makeup on ready for bed because the burden in my heart for the other moms that may be feeling the way that I've been feeling during this month of November, that it's too much and it's too hard and that I can't do it. And I just want to tell you, yes, you can. If I can do this, the woman who said I would never, ever homeschool, if I can do this, you can do this. Not because I'm wonderful, not because you're wonderful, but because God is good and he's faithful. And what he brings you to, he will truly bring you through. Because he can't deny himself and that's who he is. He's a wonderful, faithful God, and I just hope that whoever this was for, that you're encouraged to just dig your heels in and do the hard thing, knowing that when you stand before the Lord, you will hear those wonderful words, well done, my good and faithful servant, enter in to your reward. God bless you.